Hello everyone, Gilly here. Today I wanted to talk about how you might go about faking type classes in F Sharp. Now if you've studied the functional programming literature at all, or if you've looked at Haskell or heard any criticisms of F Sharp, you may have heard that one of the criticisms that's out there is that it doesn't support type classes. Now if you're not familiar with what type classes are, you may want to peek at what they are. In this video I'll do my best to describe them, but in general, you can kind of think of them, or at least I think of them, as being overpowered interfaces, if you're familiar with the f -sharp or the object-oriented lingo. Basically, type classes are kind of like interfaces, but it's a much more functional approach to interfaces, and one that, if your language embraces it and uses it in conjunction with type inference, can have real crazy power to allow you to write truly general code um, that just kind of works and is just kind of magical. It's pretty impressive. So in this video, I'm going to be faking interface uh, type classes in F sharp, but you may not want to do exactly what I'm doing in real code. This is kind of just for illustrative purposes um, and also to, to, to help you understand type classes a little bit better and kind of the drawbacks when you're faking them like this, and also to see how you might do some kind of interfaces um, in a functional programming language without first class support. So hopefully that's not too much, but I don't think it'll be a long video. It should be kind of fun. So to do this, I'm gonna use the example of a monoid. If you're not familiar with a monoid, I would absolutely recommend looking that up as well. It's a really cool abstraction that ends up showing its face in many areas of code. So I'm going to really quickly go over what it is. Basically a monoid has two things. It's an interface. You can think of it as an interface with two things. It has an empty element and it also has a way to combine elements, which you'll frequently hear called append. So it also has a couple of other things associated with it, like a couple of rules that must be um, upheld when you're using it, when you're implementing it. But I'm, I'm going to gloss over those a little bit for the sake of this video and the time. But basically some examples might be, and one of the most common ones you hear is string concatenation. So in F-sharp, the empty string can be thought of as the empty part of a monoid. And your append can be, in F-sharp, it's just the plus operator to concatenate strings. So you can think of these two things together as forming a monoid. Um, some other examples are, let's see, we got an empty list. An append is actually just list.append, which kind of works out nicely. And actually, other things are monoids too. For example, addition itself. So addition is a monoid where zero is your empty, and append is just the plus operator. Basically, you can think of your empty element as one that, when it's combined with append, doesn't change the value it's combined to, um, if that makes any sense. Let's do one more. If you're thinking about anding things together, A-N-D, in Boolean operations, you might have true as your empty element, and you might have the and operator as your append. So it's just a way to combine things, saying combine them such that and is always used. So that's kind of the, a rough idea of what a monoid is. So how would we go about defining a type class to represent this interface in f -sharp? Well, to start, like many things in F sharp, we're going to start with a type. Monoid. O I. Sorry about that. M O N O I D is how you spell monoid. And the type is going to be generic about something. And that something is basically the thing that is our monoid. This probably won't make a lot of sense until I actually show you. So I said there are two things we need. We need an empty, which just gives us back the thing that is our monoid. And we need an append. An append is kind of a, one of those really nice looking functions that takes an A, then another A, and gives us back an A. It takes two things and splats them together. Um, of course, like I said, there are a couple of other laws to this structure, but I'm going to not worry about those for now. So how would we actually define some instances of this pseudo type class, if you will? Well, we can really just define values that Basically, what we've defined below will work for the most part. So, actually, not even for the most part. It will work. So, let string monoid equal 
And this is something that if you were in a language like Haskell, you'd have to do anyways. List monoid equal let add monoid equal that. And then we'll call this last one and monoid. You could also call it something like, I don't know, all. Make sure everything's true, all are true. Um, let me really quickly run this and make sure I haven't done anything crazy. Okay, I have it. So if you were to model type classes this way, the general lingo here is this would be your type class definition. And then these things below would be instances of your type classes. Now these really aren't meant to change. They should never be mutable and they should never contain elements that are mutable. Otherwise, you're gonna have a bad day. So to start out, let's build a function that uses a monoid. So how about we have one append else empty. It's kind of a wild function name, but basically the idea is that we're gonna take in a condition and they're gonna take in an X and a Y. And what we wanna do is we wanna use mo the monoid structure to say if the condition is true, uh, let's, let's pretend we're building this for strings. So if we're building it for strings, we're gonna do X plus Y. Otherwise, we're gonna return back the empty string. So this is very nice, but it's not very general. We're only using concepts of the monoid inside of the append else empty, but we're not actually using a monoid. Like this is only useful for strings. We couldn't use this for numbers. We couldn't use this for addition, even though this part right here looks like addition. And this you can imagine being zero. So what do we do about that? Well, to resolve that we can do what we always do in functional programming, pass a new argument. If we don't have the functions in the scope, we can pass them right down. So let's go ahead and do that. And while I'm doing this, I'm going to specify the types very clearly so you can see how this relates. But basically we have a monoid, a monoid coming in. And the monoid is gonna have some generic value under the hood. And this is where we get our sort of generis, gener, gener, our genericism. This is where our code becomes generic. So these things are the actual value of the monoid, X and Y. And what we're gonna do is instead, and now you'll notice if I compile this, it breaks because the generic type A doesn't have a plus function defined. Actually, it doesn't break, it throws a warning, which is interesting. Basically, it's saying that even though I said it's an A, it's really a string because it sees that I'm doing stringy things down here. But Basically now what we want to do is we want to use append and we want to use empty instead of using the hard-coded operators. Excellent, now we have a generic thing that's defined over a monoid. So one thing I'd like to note is that if you're doing this in a language like Haskell, which has type class support, it's going to know that because you're using monoid functions on the inside, this thing should be injected. It's gonna know that by, by inference that, you, that, you, that this is gonna need to be a thing, a thing that exists in scope of the function, so you don't even need to specify it. This is the first pitfall to doing this kind of faking monoids out in F sharp. So let's quickly call this a few times. Let's see, what do I wanna do? Let's do append, else empty, and let's start with our list monoid. And if we have false, let's just put some values in here. So basically what this is saying is do your append, otherwise give me empty, over the list monoid. And the condition here happens to be false, but you can imagine something else in the program determines that and some values. Now this is, we expect this to return the empty element of the list monoid, and it does, awesome. So now let's do it with true. It does the append as we'd expect. Let's really quickly throw it out for one other instance. Let's do it for the add monoid, because I like the add monoid. Um, so if we add uh, 35 and seven against false, it shouldn't do anything if we add 35 and seven against true, it should work. Of course, we need the add monoid here. 
So if we run that, we get back zero, which is the empty, and then we get back 42. So this illustrates kind of how you might go about calling this. This is also the second big downfall to dummying out or faking type classes in a language like F-sharp. Because the compiler doesn't embrace this style or what we're doing, it's kind of ad hoc, if you will, we have to pass the actual instance at some point. So here, it's really cool in my opinion, because we have defined this function that's really operating over monoids in general, but we have to make it concrete because otherwise F-sharp isn't gonna know how to look up these appends and empties correctly. Now in Haskell, this is another thing you wouldn't have to do. It would know because list is a monoid. You would define, in Haskell, you would define an instance of monoid for list. And because you've defined that instance and because it knows this is a function over monoids, you wouldn't have to specify this. The inference would just figure it out and under the covers, it's really passing this to the function. It's just an implicit argument. It's something that you're not actually seeing. So that's the second drawback. Now, I'm gonna illustrate a third drawback, which is interesting, but basically a little bit of background. Uh, monoids are related to another type called a semi-group. Group. And a semi-group only has a pen. It doesn't have an empty element per se. Now, the relation works such that this append and this append are the same thing. So basically what that means is if you had another function, let's just call it appendif. And appendif is gonna be a little bit different. It's gonna take a semi-group. And it's gonna say if, then do the append. Otherwise, just return x or the first thing back. You can see now we're just using append. Basically, this is a little more generic than a monoid, but if you've rolled your own type classes in this kind of ad hoc way, there's not really a great way for F sharp to know that monoid and semi-group are related. And there's not even really a way to make that distinction that I'm aware of in F sharp. So technically you should be able to pass any monoid to this append if, but you'll have to pass an actual semi-group instance. For example, I'll show you that just breaking real quick. Append if, uh, if we get the add monoid on true. So we'll see it break because monoid and semi-group are not the same thing. And this is a little bit unfortunate, but I mean, we've kind of faked these things out. We've, we've ad hocery bolted them onto the side, but it was the best we can do. So there's one other thing I'd like to show you really quick, just if you're looking at it from the Haskell perspective. Um, in Haskell, you would say something like monoid A, bool, if you were to specify, for example, the function, the signature of append else empty, a, 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 which is pretty cool, because in a way, if you kind of blur your eyes, it looks a lot like, if you just made a normal arrow here, it looks a lot like that. So you can really kind of think of, of type classes as just another argument to a function that gives you the parts of the functions that make it the parts of the function that make it generic. Well, I hope this was useful for you in kind of understanding how you might go about rolling your own interfaces in functional programming. Again, this is commonly called type class. These are commonly called type classes. Of course, these are, as I kind of sh tried to show you through the video, super weak form of type classes. If you have any questions, let me know.